The accusation that Russia meddled in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, that is still legally unproven, but there are fewer and fewer people who don't believe Russia did try to influence the outcome. A few hours ago, the most senior Republican in Congress, Paul Ryan, contradicted Trump, saying there's no question that Russia interfered in our election and continues to attempt to undermine democracy here and around the world. He continued, the president must appreciate that Russia is not our ally. Here's what the two leaders have to say on that theme. Well, first of all, he said there was no collusion whatsoever. Uh, I guess uh, he said as strongly as you can say it, they have no information on Trump. I'm not interested in this issue in this single bit. It's the internal political games of the United States. Don't make the relationship between Russia and the United States, don't hold it hostage of this internal political struggle. Let's speak to Ross Feingold in Taipei. Ross is the former Asia chairman of Republicans Abroad. Ross, thank you very much for your time. Shall we leave the collusion equation out of this, okay, whether or not Trump and his campaign did actually work with the Russians. Let's forget about that for the moment. Let's look at the issue of alleged Russian interference. Two slightly different things, although they are linked, of course. What do you make of what Paul Ryan has said? Well, Paul Ryan and other congressional leaders, whether Democrats or Republicans, do have to look to the, the fact of the indictments, including the most recent one of 12 Russians, the earlier one of the Russian internet operation. And, and the facts of those indictments speak to themselves. So there, there's not much doubt in the United States among the political leadership that there was Russian interference. And as you said, the, the question of whether or not there was any collusion between the Trump campaign and these Russians is a different issue. And so far, there's no evidence. And, and the president and his supporters are going to point to the fact that uh, the, the, even the most recent indictments were clear on this issue. So why is the president then not confronting the issue so much more strongly? Why is he not, when he's standing at a podium next to Vladimir Putin, saying to the world, there is no doubt in my mind and in the mind of my country's intelligence agencies that the Russians did try to influence the vote? And then he can go on, sure, to defend himself and saying that he won the election fair and square as far as he's concerned. But he questions publicly the work of U.S. intelligence agencies. Do you regard that as dangerous? Well, of course, we would hope that the president respects the analysis of intelligence agencies, but he does fairly point out mistakes that intelligence agencies have made in the past on various issues, so it plays into the president's narrative. But there's another way to look at this, which doesn't get enough attention, and that's simply how the president approaches foreign policy. And look, the president knows that there's contentious issues in the relationship with Russia and with China, obviously North Korea. But we see how the president uh, approaches the bilateral meetings with these leaders. And it's simply a question of the president's negotiating style that he's trying to extract something when he meets with these leaders. Usually it's better deals for the U.S., whether it's on trade or security issues. So there's a consistent pattern that even when the president is critical or knows that there's contentious issues, when he meets bilaterally with these leaders that he's attempting to strike some sort of deal with, he takes a somewhat friendly tone, and the president thinks that's going to achieve his foreign policy goals. Whether it does in the long term remains to be seen. Yeah, I, you know, I totally understand your point. But then you hear Donald Trump, the supposed leader of the free world, which that position has that title, saying good things about Vladimir Putin, praising Xi Jinping for being a strong man, saying that Kim Jong-un is a funny guy and a good negotiator. All of these leaders have certain questions that the world is asking of them about how they treat their country in respect to their relations with the outside world. In other words, that they only care about one thing and one thing alone, and that they might even suppress certain moral standards to ensure the supremacy of their nations. Do you believe that the President of the United States should be better than that? And is Donald Trump better than that when he deals with Vladimir Putin, a man whose army is accused of supplying a weapon that killed 300 people in a passenger plane, whose intelligence services are accused of killing Russian citizens abroad, and many, many other accusations? 
Well, th there is a backstop on these issues, and that is the role of Congress. And I think it's fair to say that Congress, if not the president or the State Department, uh, is very outspoken on all the issues that you identified, whether it's religious freedom, political freedom. And, there, and the fact is, there's also many people in the administration who do raise these issues, whether it's Mike Pompeo at, at the State Department or other agencies. Uh, so these issues are part of the U.S. foreign policy agenda. If, if it's not something that the president brings up as the top of the agenda when he meets with foreign leaders, uh, I think the president would say that there are other pressing issues. I'm not going to uh, make all, the, all these issues the, the full-time priority of the foreign policy agenda when there's also trade and security issues. There's give and take. I mean, we could criticize every U.S. president for not emphasizing these issues as well. It would be a fair criticism of all of President Trump's predecessors to say they didn't give enough attention to religious freedom, human rights, political freedom. Uh, and they, they did that in the interest of other issues that were on the foreign policy agenda. That is not something that's unique to President Trump. Okay. Ross Feingold, we always appreciate you joining us on TRT World. Thank you, sir.